have recently relocated from Vancouver to um, Toronto, and what we wanted to show you was a collection of images that inspired us. Thank yep. you for having us, too. So when we were thinking about design, think, and passion, we thought like all of that sort of was so closely tied with inspiration. And so we thought that we would show you a collection of images of people, places, and things that inspired us. We try to find inspiration in almost anything that surrounds us. And I think one of the things that, like we generally look in back alleys, in garbage cans, and anything that can basically give us some sort of, a, um, some sort of like inspiration. So I found this beautiful pattern in a garbage can in Barcelona when I was doing grad school there. And I just thought that it was just something that I wanted to take a photo of because it's just like you have garbage and then you have this beautiful pattern on top. When I lived in Vancouver, there was a garbage strike and I was fascinated by it with these mountains of garbage that were growing over time. So I spent an afternoon and dug through a whole bunch of alleys and dumpsters and didn't get too close and personal with it, but I documented everything and started to create these photo collages that were kind of just like studies of garbage and the aesthetic and layering and texture found within it. There's another artist based out of Vancouver called Cameraman, and he elevates garbage to the level of art. Uh, it's wrapped in a Louis Vuitton pattern, and it's called Attention to Retail. And this installation you wouldn't find unless you went down the back alleys and streets. It's not in the middle of anywhere. It's only the curious people that can see it. Is this thing on? No. Okay, so um, recently we just got back from a trip, a business trip from New York, and we were really lucky enough to go to Mark and Sarah's house from Wooster Collective, and they've spent they've spent the last probably like since September 11th when all of that stuff happened. What they started doing was trying to document street art, and what they started doing also was um, putting up little pieces of art for each other to discover for each other, which was really romantic, but also just the fact that they don't commercialize their website. This is their daughter's bedroom. They ha She has um, custom artwork done by, you know, Space Invader, Banksy, and a couple of other people. They're usually about her, de depicted about her. So during our stay with them, they asked us who uh, some of our favorite artists were. And this is a friend of ours, Bandit, who we got a chance to work with in Vancouver. And it's Vanna White revealing a message to Banksy for him. He has a very uh, simplified um, aesthetic, but it's also so super strong and powerful. He's getting into industrial design now, and I can only imagine what his uh, design sensibility is going to be applied to it. Um, that piece was used in a place called The Tunnel, which they had the Cannes Festival, and they flew in hundreds of different street artists to occupy an abandoned tube in the UK. And over time, people are allowed to go in there. It's a free space to go paint, to go um, express yourself. So it's this organic art installation that changes co consistently. It's, it's every time you go in there, it's something different. And so because we talk about design, think, and passion, we, one of the things we do for free and not with a paying, for a paying client is actually try to do street work, artwork. And so this is a pixelated version of Bandit. And um, we decided um, there was a restaurant in Vancouver and it was and it burned down to basically the entire end burned down. We asked if we could just do sanctioned graffiti on street art, which is amazing. And so they said yes. And so this is what we called Streets' as laboratory, which was setting up. And the great thing about this sort of space was that because it's on the downtown east side in Vancouver, there's a lot of social issues. And so we were talking to people with well, like low-income housing people, we were talking to street people, and there was like this really great uh, communication. Uh, this is another space that I thought was really wonderful. It's in Brooklyn, and some guy on like uh, a like a place that's being renovated in the middle in the stealth of the night, put on chalkboard paint and put "Before I Die" so that he could get people to get people to put what they want to do before they die. This is close by to that area too. There was a competition called Not Just Another Street Container where they asked people in the community what they would turn a street container into. And they had bike store ideas, community gardens, a restaurant, and uh, a flood of people applied for it. And through a jury process, one of our friends, Rosanna, actually won her team. And uh, it became a community radio station called B-Box. So this radio station has uh, DJs, um, live music, I think they have like, cooking shows, anybody who has a good idea for a uh, radio station they can come in and they can broadcast to people in the community. And this is a more intimate conversation. There's a restaurant here in town called Barbolo, and there's a small little table, and if you don't know about it, um, it's got one drawer, and when you open it up, it's this whole world of artwork. People write notes, they draw pictures, they leave behind ticket stubs, and it's this constant uh, 
dumping ground of really, really great small pieces of art. And there's actually a website that documents all of the communications between people and, and the gifts that are left behind. Okay, so at heart, I think most designers are nerds. And this is an example of the nerdiness that designers do, which is the graphic standards manual. This is the actual graphic standards manual from the MTA, which is for the subway. It's take, like, the fact that you could distill down something so complex into something so usable by the average person blows my mind. And uh, the interesting thing is this is designed by Matt and a week, just a couple of weeks ago, we're back to the map that we used in 1973. It was used for about three years, and he gets to say that his work was uh, reused in his lifetime, he's 84. We saw this in San Francisco, and it's an electronic microscope photo of strontium, and it blew me away to be across a room and to see an electron microscope viewpoint. Uh, seeing people, yeah, it did. Just like, you know, to, to say, take something so microscopic and make it into an installation with... Okay, I'm scared of flying. So when we, and, and Porter is awesome, so basically whenever we have to fly anywhere with Porter, we get a little snack. Like, can you imagine you still get fed on a plane for free? Um, but so then I started drawing and we just start changing, like we just take one thing and so we do a lot of play as well. We've talked about, you know, play's been discussed and I think it's so important this, to keeping yourself relevant. This is another way that we collaborate with each other, the half and half costumes. There's Lionel Richie Rich, Barry Whitesnake, Barack Obama, Waitrose Rachel's Golly, and half Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Closing uh, this last slide, I found myself in the middle of the night looking through a spreadsheet and actually typed in inspiration, so I was trying to find inspiration in the spreadsheet. And I had to sit back and laugh about it and realize that you know it's not it's not all the crazy stuff.